Good morning. We thank you once again for joining us here at St. Edmund and welcoming us into your home as we celebrate this Mass with you on this 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our gathering hymn, Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come on. Good morning and thank you again for joining us at home. We hope that all of you are doing well, that you are keeping safe and healthy, and we look forward to the day when you can come back and join us here at the church and we can be um, rid of this uh, pandemic. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we as always take a moment first to come before a merciful God, to call to mind our sins and ask our Lord to forgive us of those sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us sing our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, 
and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need to show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things might make you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and in those who know you, you rebuke Demetri. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us for power whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord.
Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You reveal to us the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvester, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a tradition when a priest is ordained that he uh, produce a holy card that commemorates his ordination and usually the holy card on the front has some kind of picture, um, uh, religious picture, and then on the back usually the priest will pick a scripture reading. The scripture reading that I picked was from the book of Sirach, chapter 2, starting with verse 1. And it says, My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for trials. Be sincere of heart and steadfast, and do not be impetuous in time of adversity. Rather, cling to him, do not leave him, that you may prosper in your last days. Accept whatever happens to you. In periods of humiliation, be patient. For in fire, gold is tested and the chosen in the crucible of humiliation. Trust in God, and he will help you. Make your way straight and hope in him. You that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Do not stray, lest you fall. You that fear the Lord, trust in him, and your reward will not be lost. You that fear the Lord hope for good things, for lasting joy and mercy. This week, Jesus talks to us about good and evil. And, of course, the story of good and evil is really the story of life. Since creation, it's the story, certainly, of the church. We hear of this, this wheat that is planted and during the night, this enemy comes and plants weeds within the wheat. Of course, the wheat represents the people of God, you and I, and this enemy, of course, is the devil himself. And it's interesting that when it comes to good and evil, very rarely in life is it, you know, so very, very clear, the good here and the evil here where we can clearly make a discernible choice. Rather, the reality of life is that good and evil are oftentimes quite intertwined, just like these weeds that get into this wheat. They're not just simply growing next to the wheat, but they're literally wrapping themselves around the wheat. Those of you who garden 
know that there are some weeds, in fact, that actually mimic the appearance of the plant that they attach themselves to so you can almost not even tell them apart. I told a story a few weeks ago about working as a police officer and I remember being called one day to a, 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 an assault that had just occurred and my partner and I get to the scene and on the ground is a man holding his nose. He's got a bloody nose and a bloody lip. And at first look I thought, well gee, here's our victim right here. He's the good and I've got to find who the evil one that did this to him. And yet, what I found out through an investigation was that this man laying on the ground with a bloody nose and a fat lip was extremely intoxicated and had actually assaulted a woman walking down the boardwalk and when he assaulted the woman by grabbing her in an inappropriate place, her husband decided to bop this guy in the nose. So as it turned out, the man laying on the ground with the bloody nose and the bloody lip was the one that got arrested. Jesus reminds us today that in life, good and evil, again, can be oftentimes very difficult to discern, wrapped up within each other. But we are still called to try to fight against that evil, still called to do all we can to extricate ourselves from that evil. The story that Jesus tells, the parable talks about the slave owners coming to uh, the master and saying, should we pull the, wheat, or pull the weeds? And he tells them not to. He tells them to let them grow, and in the end, everything will be pulled and separated. The wheat will be used for its purpose, and the weeds will be taken apart from the wheat and burned in a fire. At the end of time, God himself, Jesus himself, will judge us. He will separate the wheat from the chaff. He will at that time know who is good and who is evil. And our challenge in this life is to live and to experience hopefully the good, create the good, but also know that evil exists. It's part of life. It's a reality of life. Maybe the question we might ask is, well, does God allow this evil? And according to this story, he does. Maybe more importantly, the question is why? Why does he allow this evil? And that's a question that I'm not sure any of us can truly answer adequately. But perhaps one reflection to think about is that by allowing the evil in contrast, in juxtaposition, we can then see the good. We can think of many probably cases in life, in our own lives, in the history of the church. We look at someone like Maximilian Kolbe who was imprisoned by the Nazis, who decided to give his life in order that another man who had a family could live. We can learn from that example. We can learn from what happened in that example. There was evil in that example. The Nazis had concentration camps. The Nazis were putting people to death. But yet it is when Maximilian Kolbe gives his life for the other that we learn that valuable lesson about giving one's life for another, that would never have happened, would never be an example if there wasn't that problem of evil and good. We are challenged, of course, again, as Jesus tells us, to go against those dark powers. But evil is always attacking us. Evil is always out there. And it can be difficult, as I read from Sirach. It can be a challenge. But we are called to not be impetuous in time of adversity. We are called to cling to God and not leave him to trust in our Lord during these times. And hope that through that difficulty, 
as we heard in Sirach, the gold being tested in fire. The gold has to be put in the fire so that the impurities can be burned away from the gold. And sometimes we have to suffer, no lesser than our Savior suffered, in order that we too perhaps can change, so that we can learn from that suffering, so that we can clearly discern the evil from the good. A challenge that, of course, is easier preached than lived, but clearly a challenge that is in our world today. We see it in the church itself, the church that has experienced incredible evil over the centuries and the history of the church and in our modern day with the scandal of the church. But in that mixing of good and evil, is it possible that something good will happen? And that, and that although many, many suffered, that maybe some good will come out of the realization that this kind of evil exists in the world. The John Jay study done said that abuse by priests since 1960 made up 1.8% of abusers, which tells us there's another 98.2% out there. And maybe this evil that has been identified in the church and hopefully washed from the church forever will also allow us to wash that evil away from society in general. I read an article that said one in four children in the United States by the time they're 18 has been molested. That's evil, and that needs to change, and we need to do something about that. Jesus reminds us that evil exists, and that the extrication of that evil must be done carefully, and that in the end, the wheat will be gathered the weeds will be separated. But again, we shouldn't lose hope. We shouldn't despair. We shouldn't be surprised about evil. We should expect it. We should be prepared for it. We should fight always against it. Unfortunately, it is at times difficult to discern. It hides. It does all it can to fool us. But Jesus reminds us this day of that so that we can be prepared, so that we will withstand that evil, so that although it does grow among us, although it does exist among us, it will not have the final say. It will not ultimately overcome the wheat. It will not, in the end, win the battle. Jesus has won the battle for each of us, the battle over sin, and as long as we trust in him, as long as we stay close to him, as long as we follow him, we too will win that battle. We may come through that battle with scars, we may come through that battle injured, and in some cases we may lose people in that battle. But in the end, we shall be victorious. And as a people of faith, we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as one in the celebration of the good things God has done for each of us, let us now ask God to hear the prayers we bring before him, and our response this morning is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the people of God may continue to grow in faith and holiness through the power of God's word and sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom God is calling to priesthood and to religious life, that they follow the Lord's prompting even in the midst of uncertainties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that God's patience and kindness may enrich and inspire the love we share within our families and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and safety of soldiers, relief workers, police, paramedic, firefighters, all who are serving to bring peace and stability to our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the of Christ's disciples, may we foster a culture of life and a civilization of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain times as we struggle to overcome the coronavirus, that they may be filled with the wisdom and understanding needed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered from the effects of the pandemic, may God's Holy Spirit bring them to comfort and healing. And for those who have died, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, and all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, and especially for Doris and Giacomo Ciani, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and intentions of each person here, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray again to our Blessed Mother that she may open our hearts and our minds to see as Christ taught us today that evil does not win, that in spite of the evil of this pandemic that we see the good of all the wonderful people who are serving us in the medical field and so many other uh, services that have continued to work to serve us in this difficult time, that we can see even through the evil of perhaps a few uh, bad people in law enforcement that the majority of them are good. The majority of them are doing their job and keeping us safe every day. That we may see in the see through the evil of some people in the world who wish to bring uh, violence to our world that there is a lot of good that gets done each and every day by so many people who are following the path of Christ. And we ask our Blessed Mother to help us with that and to see that for what it is we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, you are patient and you are kind. Hear the prayers we bring to you this day through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. During our preparation of the gifts, our hymns, many and great. Many and great are bearers of the word. The Christ speaks, the heart seeks. Gathered as one, we listen to the word and share the meal of new birth. The from springtime to fall, the wine flows in Christ.
Christ we recall, the, 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 the sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great, the seeds upon the field, the hand sows, the seeds grow. Take now and eat, the covenant fulfilled, the bread of promise and life. The wheat grows from springtime to fall, the wine flows in Christ we recall the sharing of our lives with one and all. You pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Doris and Giacomo Siani, for whom this Mass is offered and whom you've called from this world to yourself. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Edmund, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us give one another an appropriate sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy that you should enter under my roof. But I always say, say the, the word, word, my soul shall be Our communion hymn, Christ be our light. For night we wait in darkness, longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our Shine through the darkness, Christ be our light, shine 
And let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from, fir from former ways to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in love and peace to serve our Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a great week. You too, Father. Our closing hymn is Blessed by Your Sacrifice. Blessed by your sacrifice, strong in your love, O oh Christ, our grateful voices to you we raise. True adoration throughout creation rings out. Okay.